go and work over some water effects. We're going to do a water spray. The water spray, um, if you go into your particles, go down, you'll see a couple of different options for some spray and splash textures that we'll use for it. All right, so let's go ahead and go over to our hierarchy and click on Create. We'll do the Create Particle System again. And for the particle system on this one, let's just label this. Let's see, we'll just call this one Water Stream. And go ahead and set the position at 0, 0, 0. All right. So instead of the rotation, though, like at the moment, we could, well, actually, we'll go ahead and create it going upwards, and then we'll rotate it side to side so you can see it more like a, a water stream, how it would look. And we'll probably do that as we work with it. All right. So let's go ahead and get started. First one, duration. Let's take this back down just to one. The uh, the start lifetime. Um, we want to make these kind of a different ones, but actually before we do those, let's go to our renderer and let's go ahead and apply the uh, the image to it. Let's see. We're going to do our splash. So go ahead and take your splash material and drag it onto the splash over there. And it's going to be similar to that one that we used for the spark. Um, same kind of idea. We're going to use our render mode and change it to the stretched billboard. And we'll take our speed scale. And the speed scale, let's go ahead and just do about a 0.05 on it. Somewhere around there. Should be pretty good. We'll take our length scale and set this back down to zero. Alright. The uh, sort mode, at the moment, we'll leave it at none. But if we need to, we can... Uh, we can reset it uh, over it with the other one. All right, so let's go and go back up to the top again. Our lifetime over here, we'll set to two constant values, and for the lifetime start, let's go for about a one, one and a quarter, uh, to somewhere around one and a half. And that part, even on the scripting side, it may depend on how far do you want it to be spraying. You could do it where it's a very short spray, or you could do it for a long spray. It just depends on that side of it. The speed, let's do the same thing with this on the two constant values. We'll do somewhere around a 40 to 60, 50 to 60 range. Um, I'll go for about a 40 to about a 60 right here. There we go. All right. So we're starting to get this pulled in. Now notice we still have a little bit of a awkwardness in terms of the uh, the random value going through there, and we'll fix that when we adjust our cone size. All right, so let's go ahead and go to our speed, and we're going to take the speed right here, and we're going to take our uh, random between two constants on speed, and the speed. Let's see. Oh, there we go. Start size, and the start size that we're going to go with. We'll go for about a 0 .001, and then we'll do about a 0 .05. Let's try for that range. I might go for even a little bit more. I might go for like a 0 .02. So what we're trying to get is what looks like just some uh, thick parts of water shooting out. And actually, that could be a lot of different types, too. You can even have it like uh, bullet trails and stuff if you wanted. All right, so our size is going to be set for there. Rotation. Um, if you wanted to rotate it, you could, uh, especially if you have a different color, different shapes inside of it. So we'll set it up so that it's ready for that. We'll do the 0 to 360. All right, and then color, let's do two color transitions. We'll do a random between two colors. We'll go for a solid white, and then we'll just go for a, just a little bit of a gray, anywhere between a 190, 200 on the uh, gray scale on the side over there. The gravity, let's go ahead and set gravity at 1. And then we'll set our um, simulation space to be world. That way, when we move it around, those are going to continue moving in the direction they started from. Uh, set my position back to zero here. All right. So we have those set up in place. Let's go ahead and go into our shapes and our emissions. In the emission, we have it currently just 10, but what we're really looking for is to be creating enough so it feels like a stream. So let's go for about 150, 200 somewhere around there. Let's see, 200 might be a little bit too much. Let's try 150. There we go. So to do that, the angle is way too much. Um, we're looking at more of just a, a water hose end, so we want to make this uh, the angle go much smaller. We'll take this one probably around a... Uh, we don't want to take it straight down to zero because we want to give it a little space to be able to work within, maybe about a 0.8 or so. 
and then the radius itself, let's take this down to like a point 0.1 there we go so that's kind of getting that right feel to it, is that we have it coming from a single point and then we have it just opening up a little bit there alright, nice okay, so we have our emission set for it, we've got our shapes the uh, um, the options on here again. If you're if you're coming out of something that's a little bit larger of a uh, uh, of a spray system, then you can just increase your radius, and you may have to increase your rate as well for that one. All right. Let's go ahead and go down to our limit velocity over lifetime, and this one we're just going to take. If we check on this, we just want to say that the uh, the the limit that we're going to have the speed will go for about a 50, somewhere around 50. That's going to be how much speed we actually limit it to. Yeah, so that looks good. I'm going to close my shapes roll out. That way I don't have to keep seeing that blue uh, shape to it. Alright, so the dampen amount, um, instead of actually leaving it at 1, just so you can see it, take it down to like a 0.1, and you'll notice where it's going at, for the, the size of it. It goes longer, and then it gets slowing down up there at the top. So depending on how you want the... Uh, uh, the amount to come out, then you can just change it through there on it. I'm going to go ahead and leave it up all the way at the one right there. Alright, so let's go to our color over lifetime. And we're going to go ahead and just kind of color the water uh, instead of being that solid white. Let's go ahead and just add a little bit of color to it. Um, at the top, we'll go ahead and leave the top and bottom both solid since the water isn't really going to be disappearing. It's not like turning into foam. It's just a solid uh, chunk of water. Um, but on the bottom side, let's change some colors up here. Uh, for the first one, color over on this side. I'm going to take this down just about to black. We'll go a little bit above black right there. And then we'll place in a second one pretty close to, right around the 15% range. And let's do this one a little bit of a dark blue. Let's do blue right around there. Maybe a little bit of a actually go maybe a little bit more blue there we go so notice we're starting to look a little bit more like water we've got that kind of blue tint happening right there and then let's go ahead and take it all the way to the end down here and the end we'll go for that let me use the eyedropper tool I'm going to actually grab that blue I had on that side and then we'll just take it a little bit darker there we go so 7, 8, 13 on that one. Alright. So there we go. We've actually got kind of a nice little spray going right there. Visually, it's actually starting to feel like some water coming out of it. Alright. So that's going to be our color over lifetime. We can go down to the collision. So your collision option right here, for instance, um, if you want it to hit the plane, so if you have objects and you want to shoot the water at it and hit it, just remember, you can do collision, you can do planes and set it to world, and then you have the option to collide with, using your layers, you choose which one you want to collide with or not, we'll say everything on it. The uh, option up here is to whether it bounces when it hits or whether or not it stops, we'll go for about a, um, a 0.3 and a 0.2. There we go. And just as a, an example real quick, let me just turn it around the other direction so you can see it. So when it starts to hit, so you have a really heavy hit right here coming really fast. So instead of this, uh, and it's actually kind of a good chance to check, is that the bounce might be a little too much. Let's go for a 0.05. There we go. And then the dampen, instead of being uh, two. When it goes to it, actually goes for a little bit longer. We'll go for a. Let's try a 0.05 on this one as well. There we go. Nice. So now we've got kind of a little bit of a spray that the the water is coming down. It hits and it even hits and actually kind of goes across, kind of like water would do when it's going across the surface. And you could even do a uh, sub emitter, so you could have the emitter come down, and hit, and then spawn new ones with little um, particles of water and little droplets and things and stuff with it. Alright. 
So we've got that one set up. Well, actually, how about we just leave it this direction so we can see it for a little bit. We can kind of tell what's happening with the water and the streams from it. Okay. Um, that's pretty much all you need to do to set up the first part of it. Uh, if you are wanting anything in terms of like the size, if you want things a little bit larger or anything, just remember you can go over to your start size and you can change it. You could also, if you wanted it to be a really thin stream and get thicker, um, you could take your uh, where do we have it here? Size over uh, lifetime, and you could actually increase that one as well, and uh, gradually make it a little bit larger. But if I was to take this one and go a little bit thicker, so 0.08, notice that the lines can be a little bit thicker right there. All right, so this can be just the first part. We'll add two more elements to it just to kind of make it feel more like water, uh, kind of a fullness of how all the water pieces would be with it.